If you're new here, thank you so much for joining me. My name is David Tumich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And on this channel, we talk all things architecture. Specifically on the first Friday of every month, we build out the ultimate Archicad template together. We've been doing it for months on end. And this month we're talking about stairs and handrails. If you are new here, it is available through Patreon down below, but that's not what this is about. Let's turn around to this screen and see what the ultimate Archicad template looks like this month. So to start the video today, we have a single spine staircase in front of us. And this I'm running on Arcad 28 on the Mac version. Now, obviously I'm building this out for all users alike, meaning if you're running a Windows machine, you're absolutely perfectly fine to use this. If you're running a Mac machine, well, again, it's built for everything. Every month I switch and swap between the template to make sure things are working perfectly as I build it out to make it better every month for you guys. So let's take a look at the single spine staircase that we've developed for the template. It's a single piece object using the staircase tool in ArchiCAD and manipulated and changed. Typically I'd have all of my selections dropped into this 3D objects panel, like the laundry, kitchen, walk-in row, bathroom, and bedroom. But if we try to drag and drop the staircase into the worksheet, it just turns it into a bunch of 2D lines and makes it unusable. So you will find all of the custom staircases created for for this month right here in the favorites stairs dt stairs favorites similarly you'll find all the rails in that section as well so if i quickly jump into the railing tool open up the favorites go to dt railing you'll see there's a few rails we'll go through but we'll get there in a little bit let's jump back to the single spine staircase so what you notice is the single spine staircase has been set up to work with Australian standards. Now, personally, I've fixed the going at 250 millimeters. If you adjust it to a flexible going depth, then you'll see 240 to 322 is the permitted. But I personally like mine at 250 as a starting point. If I can't make that work, I'll move down to 240. If I can, I'll push all the way out to 300. In this scenario, I have 16 steps because I have a 189 millimeter riser. Here in Australia, 190 is the absolute maximum. So that's why it won't let me go to 15 steps. If I go to 17, it will automatically drop it to 178 and so forth. I don't really want the risers to be that narrow, so I'm happy with 16. You'll see down the bottom in the treads and risers section, all of this information is populated. Now, given this is populated in the Australian template, so no credit from me here at all, but it aligns with the National Construction Code. Then 115 millimeter riser and a maximum of 119 millimeter riser is the Australian standard. Similarly, we have our goings a minimum 240 and maximum 355. Keep in mind, these minimums, maximums and goings and risers are typically for private buildings and class one residences. They are not for public buildings. There's a whole different set of standards for that. So just be mindful if you're using this for public buildings. At the moment, it's specifically focusing on residential property. Later down the track, we'll push it to commercial. Regardless, moving on, in this section, we've chained all of it to a steel beam for both the landing and the flight structure, adjusted it all to steel, increased the tread plate to what we think is most likely appropriate for a timber staircase, manipulated all our main supports to make sure the single spine is continuous along the entire path and doesn't look a little bit funny when we change corners or direction. Same setup for the landing itself. Personally, I like the beam to follow the center line rather than having additional supports where we just don't need them. It kind of looks ugly. Next, I've introduced all the steps and treads that need to go into this design. With the treads, I've adjusted it to suit engineered timber. So if you're having an engineered timber staircase, it's most likely going to be about 35 millimeters. And I've got it floating above 10 millimeters just for some spaces and some packers and bits and pieces but realistically you could probably drop that to zero if you wanted to of course the texture itself has changed the generic french oak which is a custom texture we've created for the master bedroom and then ran that through the entire space so that is continuous now upstairs and also i've adjusted all of the floor plan settings so that it appears continuous. I actually personally don't like a break line in my stairs. I like to see all the steps going up. That way it lets me design to the full extent of where that staircase is. Personal preference though, there's no real right or wrong answer. All those settings are typically adjusted for all of the stairs that I've created. So this single spine metal staircase is just one example 
of the staircases that I've created. Let's take a look at the rest. If we select our staircase, open up the stairs, go to stairs and favorites, you'll see there's two additional stairs. I've got the concrete stairs with a timber going and riser. If we double click and click OK, that'll automatically change to my concrete staircase. Now, if you were having potentially a storage cupboard underneath, if you were doing something that didn't need to be seen, you'd be going with a concrete staircase like this, or you might be doing cantilevered concrete, a whole bunch of options. For now, I've kept it relatively simple, hence part one of what could be an endless series of grand designs of stairs. Additionally to the concrete staircase, I just have my standard timber staircase. So a lot of the time in standard construction and standard homes, you have two timber stringers either side and just timber steps in the middle. All of that has been manipulated and changed, so it perfectly suits this project. But now let's move on to the railing tool. And the railing tool is actually one of my favorite tools that I've only started using in the past couple of years because it used to be an absolute joke to try to figure it out. Anyway, I spent the time, mastered it, and now we've got some excellent options. But it's still limited per se. So what I've actually put into the main model is a glass staircase with a black handrail trim on top. Now, what you'll notice is when I select the glass balustrade, the spigots below are not highlighted. That's because the spigots are individual objects. Unfortunately, in the railing settings, regardless of the fact that it has fixing points, it's just unable to create perfect spigots at perfect locations. So design the stairs, put the spigots in manually, and we have a perfect realistic staircase with realistic spigots. And I put this one into the model because it's, well, the most complicated one out of everything. After that, we can go upstairs and have a quick look at the same balustrade up top. Again, same concept. Let's just duplicate that railing over the other side and let's say we wanted a different railing. If we go to railing and favorites, you'll see I've created eight custom railing profiles and I've done them to align with products available on the market. So you'll see they're actually named air, pick, visor, bar, etc. All of these, if you simply Google the name, for example, pick fencing, let's do that right now. You'll see you can buy off the shelf pick fencing. So if we go to this fences galore, open this up a little bit more, you'll see we can buy an off the shelf 1200 by 1280 high pick fencing, black base plate, 32 mil rods ready to go. And if you're wondering what it looks like, well, it's just spikes coming straight out the ground. It's a very modern trend at the moment. And the good thing is it's an actual branded product. It's not just a balustrade design that I've randomly come up with that you can't buy or use. Or worse yet, you're on a budget and have to custom make it for tens of thousands of dollars. Each one of these you can literally buy off the shelf if you need to, and then we'll go into custom high-end things later on. We'll start with the easiest one, which is your standard 40 mil handrail with wire. So double click, press okay. And the 40 mil posts with a 40 mil handrail created instantly. Wire spacing in between, simple, effective, very versatile in a lot of landscape projects or commercial scenes. It's not too often that you'd use it in a residential setting. So that's why we can move on to this air, double click, okay. And we have a standard balustrade, flat plates, wide profile, something that you can use generically on maybe a Hamptons home or something along that nature. Obviously you change the color from black to white in a Hamptons home, but you know, do whatever you like, it's available to you. Next, we have our pick fencing, which is what we just discussed with our flat bottom plate, our 32 mil rods coming up and no supports up the top. So it looks very seamless, very clean, especially around the pool or deck. After that, we have our visor fencing, which is generically meant to be installed on the face of a balcony. So that's why if I pan around, you'll see we have an L-shaped bracket at the bottom. So you can fix it or you can bottom mount it, whichever you prefer, but it's a relatively simple design that still looks very clean, very modern, and yet you don't have to clean glass. Moving on, a couple extras to go through. We've got our bar fencing which is kind of like a mini garrison fence. I think this looks a bit commercial for me personally, but it's making a bit of a wave in high-end residential for some reason. Again, a little bit commercial, but I've included it because, hey, you might like it. Then we have our slimline fencing from balustrading online. So if you're looking to really cheap out on your balustrading, do something yourself DIY, this is probably one of the most cost-effective options out of all of the ones that I'm demonstrating right now. We of course have that DT glass for top rail, which I've showcased previously. And then finally, we have a very typical timber posts with wire balustrade in between. Now you can use that on a staircase, you can use that on a deck, you can use it wherever you like, 
paint the timber, don't paint the timber, stain the timber, do whatever you want. It's quite a versatile balustrade option. Now, with all of those things combined and considered, we of course can actually create spiral staircases using the custom options and fine tuning them, tweaking them. So to create a spiral staircase, super easy. Create a circle, finish the circle, go to stairs, select one of my custom DT stairs. Let's just use this concrete one for now. Apply, make sure your reference line is correct. Hover over, hold space and select the circle. Finish off and there you go. You can manipulate the staircase so you end up with something like this on the left hand side. And let's go to 3D to have a quick look. That's using our concrete staircase with a custom stainless steel balustrade. Now, I haven't included this stainless steel balustrade in this template as a favorite because it's just not right yet. It needs a lot of fine tuning, a lot of tweaking to make it perfect. So for instance, you'll see it doesn't align perfectly with the bottom of the staircase, whereas on this side it does. It's way too far down on that side. It's just not perfect yet. So I don't want you guys using this, documenting it, and then seeing results at the end of the day that aren't what you would have expected. So that's not gonna be included whatsoever. But I just wanted to point out the fact that with the current tools available, you can even go ahead and do spiral staircases. Anyway, that is all for me team. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash the subscribe button down below. If you want a copy of the Ultimate Arcad template, it is linked in the description through Patreon. But otherwise, that's all from me. So I'll see you next week.